Hello and welcome to episode 77 of the Victorian Studio Podcast. My name is Maureen and I'm coming to you from my studio here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And no, you're not in the wrong place. This is the Victorian Studio Podcast, but with a little different format today. I thought I would try something new, something different. Um, I've been watching a fair amount of YouTube videos um, showing creators doing smaller types of crafts like polymer clay sculpting or tutorials and they've used this format of um, having the camera down on their work surface so that they can show what they're working on um, more legibly. So uh, I hope you don't mind this little experiment to see how it uh, will look for uh, my knitting projects. Um, I thought that rather than having the camera on me and then my holding projects out to the camera where you really can't see them very well, um, would be it would be better to have the camera actually having more close-ups of what I've been working on. So um, if this works out, then I'll continue to do this format. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing how this uh, turns out. So um, before I start in with uh, what I've been working on over the last few weeks, I did want to give a couple of thank yous and shout outs. Um, as usual, uh, Talia and Marlisha, my dear friends from the Pen Hook and Needles podcast, never fail to mention my podcast and the Harry Potter knit along that I uh, have been running for uh, well over a year now. And I really do appreciate it, ladies. Thank you so much for always being so sweet. Um, they are running a couple of cows over in Pen Hook and Needles. They always have some kind of knit along going on. Um, so I would encourage anybody who hasn't joined their group or checked out their podcast to do so. I will link it um, below in the description box below. And uh, be sure to check them out uh, for a chance of winning some awesome prizes over there. They always have wonderful knit alongs and so much um great camaraderie over in that group for the pen hook and needles people so uh, also i wanted to say thank you to zoe at 24 karat crochet um, even though i don't crochet very much uh, she also does show knitting and zoe's in the uk and i've watched her podcast for a little while now and she was very kind to give my uh, podcast a shout out on hers um, when she was talking about um, how YouTube is changing some of its algorithms and I really did appreciate it. Thank you very much Zoe. As well I want to say hi to Lisa at Fiber Nymph Dye Works. She is a podcaster for 90% Knitting. Um, I'm thrilled to be participating um, or you know, helping helping out uh, with a club, um, a yarn club that she's doing uh, this year and I'm not going to show my contribution to that but I am very honored um, that we were able to collaborate together it's it's uh, been so much fun so thank you so much Lisa so again I will uh, also link her podcast if you haven't um, checked her out so um, speaking of knit alongs the 2018 Harry Potter knit along in the uh, Ravelry group for the Victorian Studio podcast is going along very well and I've been thrilled to see all the participation so far both in um, finished objects, works in progress and in uh, the chatter all in one thread and uh, if you haven't uh, participated yet and you uh, would like to you can certainly join us at any time uh, the, you didn't have to be uh, participating in year one to join us in year two. Uh, any, anybody that wants to join in, please do. So um, all the details, rules, regulations, and prizes are listed over in our Ravelry group. As well, something new that we just started February the 1st, uh, Vonnie came up with a wonderful idea to have some challenges for uh, for the group to to do so the first one is up in the uh, thread now or in the uh, the group it's a separate thread um, so check that out if you're interested in um, uh, having a chance to win some extra prizes along the way and at the end of this uh, podcast I will be awarding two prizes uh, for uh, all the entries from January 1st to 31st um, they're the smaller prizes this month 
Um, as we did last year, I'll do smaller prizes every month and larger prizes like yarn and bags and that kind of thing um, at the end of every three months. So those will happen at the end of March. But in the meantime, um, we have a couple of prizes uh, to award that I'll do at the end of the podcast today. Okay, so um, let's get right to the knitting. I have, well, I have knitting. I have sculpting to share with you, um, some acquisitions, and um, some prizes. So that's what we'll be um, taking care of today. So uh, knitting, since the last time I recorded, I have a fair amount of uh, projects that I've uh, completed and a couple that I'm still working on. And the title of today's episode is From 6 to 600 Grams because um, I do have a wide range of um, projects to share. So I'll just start with the smallest one and work my way up. So um, if anybody that hasn't been here before, um, most of my projects that I knit are heavily influenced and inspired by my participation in the Harry Potter House Cup over on Ravelry. Um, I am part of the Gryffindor House staff over there and so I want to be able to complete as many challenges and classes as possible to get as many points as possible for our house. So um, what I find is that you don't have to do huge projects to get points. Um, so uh, sometimes I have a fallback um, uh, standard that I um, kind of go to when I'm rushed for time or uh, can't think of anything else to do. And one of the larger ongoing projects that I'm doing is a miniature uh, knitted sweater for, uh, for doing bunting. So I've done a few of them so far. So I'd like to either do a bunting or maybe some um, Christmas ornaments out of these. I haven't yet decided, but I've uh, made seven of these so far. Six of them are from the same pattern and one of them is from the Knit Picks pattern. But I found that the Knit Picks sweater, here I'll just show you that one. This one I made a few months back. It's larger than the other sweaters that, um, that I'm doing. So I'm going to set this aside and uh, keep it for something separate because I really love the way um, these other sweaters are all the same size and they are smaller than that other one. And I believe, let's see, there's the one I have is um, with a cable. That's one of the first ones that I did. I've done one with Gryffindor colors and that again is one I did a little while ago. And um, then I've done blue one and these are great for using up just you know six grams of yarn so leftover um, le you know um, scrap ends of yarn so what I've done um, the last few weeks are these two now this one was some yarn that I dyed up myself it was some lion brand um, it was a marshmallow color I can't remember the actual yarn name let's see Oh yeah, I don't have it at hand. Um, but I did dye this myself uh, when I was doing some other Christmas ornaments. I had dyed some uh, green, blue, and red to make miniature mittens out of. So there's a sweater made out of that one that I um, did for this past month. And this one is made using some Felici uh, yarn. I don't have the colorway with me, um, but it's on my project page if you uh, wanted to take a look. Um, and what I did with this is um, obviously Felici doesn't stripe that often. So what I did was I took the skein of yarn because I have a whole bunch of these. I must have, let's see, I have seven of the balls of these. this one. I um, took one ball and uh, cut it every time there was a color change, made little mini balls out of them, and then I um, uh, changed the color every three rows. Here's some of the leftovers that I still have of those. So yeah, I just um, changed those um, every time I needed to, and I had a lot of ends to um, tie together on the inside, but because it's not a real sweater, it doesn't matter if there were little knots in the back. So um, I really like the way that turned out with just doing uh, nice small stripes, because if I didn't do that, the Felici has such a long um, stripe 
for something this small, it would have looked very odd. It would have been really blocky, probably a large area like that with one color and maybe just a little bit at the end. So this way I could um, change the colors as I needed and also match up the sleeves when I went to them. Um, so this is a free pattern on uh, Ravel Ravelry. It's called the Mini Sweater Ornaments Pattern by Emily5446. And as I said, if you would like to uh, check out my uh, project pages over on Rav, uh, you'll see all the details for that. So, so there's six so far. Um, I'll just continue to do those and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with them uh, later. So I have a, uh, a long time to, to decide that. So uh, the next project that I wanted to share were a couple of bookmarks. Now over the last few weeks I did make three bookmarks but I only have two to show you today because one was mailed off for a swap and this was a swap that uh, I did for the Ravelry group called Bees Knees and this is a group that um, was set up by Vani. She's our moderator over in our Victorian Studio podcast group and uh, Studio Von Design is her Ravelry name. And she has her Bees Knees um, uh, group. And she set up this bookmark swap um, for uh, a few of us. And uh, I was partnered up with uh, Brittany uh, B Wing. So I'll show you later um, what she sent me. And she's already received hers, so I can show you this. Um, because I made two bookmarks that were um, very similar, just different colors. One of them was sent to her. And then I did another, a third one, but in a different pattern. So the one that I sent to her, and I also kept one for myself that's, you know, very similar to it, is the Leaf Bookmark by Deborah Matz. And here's the one that I kept for myself. And this one has a longer um, point to it. It seemed like in the pattern, um, I don't know if I read it wrong or, or what. It didn't look like the pattern picture. I'll just show you that here. Um, you know, it's it's rounder. So I made sure that when I did Brittany's that um, I uh, finished it off uh, quicker than what I think the pattern tells you to do. Because when I did it by the pattern, it ended up being this very long, long one. But it, it kind of looks like a, um, a sword. Uh, even though it's called a leaf bookmark. When I submitted it for classes, the teacher said it looks like a Gryffindor's sword. So that, that worked out okay. And this is just some unknown acrylic yarn that I had received from my aunt who had a whole bag of acrylic yarns that she no longer wanted and uh, sent over to me. So I use some of it for this bookmark. And then, um, as I said, I did a second one using another, um, um, this time it's like a, a cone of, of acrylic yarn. Again, I don't know the, the make of this or, or anything. Um, this is how I received it. So I did Brittany's with using this uh, purple uh, yarn and also did another bookmark for another, it was for Quidditch, I believe, that I did my third bookmark for. And this time, um, the prompt in Quidditch was to do something that either you haven't done in a long time or for the first time. And so if you've been here before, you know that I'm not a crocheter. I just tried it a little bit a few months back, um, but I really wanted to try it again. And I would really love to be able to crochet an amigurumi. I really love the look of crocheted toys. They're so adorable. Um, so I thought by maybe trying this again, I could do something small. And uh, I found a bookmark pattern on Ravelry called the Reading Bunny Rabbit. And uh, these are little amigurumi type tops, like they're stuffed heads and then flat crochet for putting inside a book. And uh, this is by Ashley Connessy. So um, I tried, the, the pattern that I was uh, trying to do was this bunny here. I thought it was the easiest one. I could start out with uh, my limited crochet abilities. And I tried and I tried and I started to get frustrated because I just didn't like the way it was turning out. It was coming out all wonky. I just, I am not a crocheter. I just have to admit it. Um, so uh, I was ready to throw out my 
little attempt at doing a bunny head when I realized that even though it was wonky, it looked more like a muzzle of a dragon. So that's what I ended up turning it into a dragon's head. <laughs> so um, I ended up just turning it on its side and then um, creating a little dragon out of it. So I had some safety eyes in my stash. Um, I added a couple of little ears for him and a, and a little spike on the top of his head. And uh, yeah, then just did, you know, regular crochet down, down here. But so I'm glad that I wasn't, I didn't have to throw this, uh, this attempt out that I was able to salvage it and make something out of it. And uh, yeah, I, I like the way he turned out. So um, at least I was able to submit him for, for Quidditch. So yeah, those were um, some of the smaller, smaller items that I've made over the past little while. Okay, let's see. Uh, next up is uh, something now um, in in Gryffindor. We also have another challenge over the next few months um, to also make projects um, that are the color of the rainbow. Not all one. Um, we've been challenged to make certain classes and other activities in specific colors so that when you're done you have all the colors of the rainbow um, red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet so uh, for red um, I thought I would do one class uh, for that and I can't remember the prompt I don't know if it was something to do with flying or birds or whatever but I decided to make a bird and um, I've made uh, both of these patterns before, but this time I've decided to combine two patterns by the same author. This is both by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner, and this is the Bluebird of Happiness and Songbird. And both of these are free patterns on Ravelry. And as I said, I've done them before, so I was very familiar with them. What I wanted to do was a bluebird of happiness with wings. So I just used the wings part of the songbird pattern. So that's what I did. I still had this beautiful uh, Fiora, Morocco Fiora yarn that I had purchased for doing my um, Santa Mouse at Christmas time. So um, this is a uh, cotton viscose alpaca nylon and wool mix and it's uh, it's beautiful so I had plenty of that to use and also in my scraps I still had some uh, yellow and black so that I could uh, make a beak and the black part of the face of a cardinal and so that's what I made so this is my little cardinal and as I said it's the bluebird of happiness body with the songbird wings attached. And then I just uh, sewed on myself the uh, the face in black and his eyes, of course, and his uh, little beak. And then I just used some of the red yarn for a little um, tuft on the top of his head like, uh, like um, cardinals have. So yeah, that was a lot of fun to, to create this little guy. I'm pleased the way he turned out. So, that's a little cardinal. I'll just move this out of the way. So yes, another class done and dusted as they say. And let's see the next one. Uh, we're getting into a little bit bigger projects now. Uh, this time we were uh, asked to do something in the color of orange. And uh, the prompt for the class that I was doing it for um, was asking to do a project that was inspired by flames or fire. So I found um, uh, some orange cotton, um, it's the Bernat cotton that I had already in my stash and it just happened to be the flame colorway so that was perfect. So I've used most of this up, I just have a little bit left of this and then I found on Ravelry a free pattern called the Candle Flames Washcloth uh, by Renee Jones. So I used US number six needles for this and um, I luckily checked out the um, other people's projects for this pattern and found out that there was an error in the pattern and uh, was able to fix it up before I started. 
Um, so yeah, this is a little bit bigger washcloth than I usually make, but I really love the, uh, the candle flames in this. So if you are doing this uh, project, I think I've indicated it on my project page. Check out though um, all the helpful projects for this pattern. It's always a good idea, it's a good practice to do that anyway, for especially free patterns. Um, because maybe they haven't been checked as much as, um, you know, paid for patterns um, to make sure that they don't have errata. So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with this. Now, I don't have um, any decor in my house, like either in the bathrooms or the kitchen that is really orange. So what I'm going to do is uh, keep this for the fall. Um, for maybe Halloween and I think this will make a nice cloth maybe underneath some Halloween decor or um, or fall decor so so yeah it'll still get used but uh, just not as a washcloth I'm sure so that was that was a lot of fun to do and very quick uh, to do it at the beginning it's a little um, a little hard to get started. Even a few other people that have done this pattern have indicated that they did have some difficulty kind of getting into it, but once you get started um, it goes pretty quickly. So uh, let's see, the next um, project that I wanted to share was something that I uh, realized with two days left in the month that I hadn't yet completed one of the challenges our head of house at Gryffindor House had set up for us. And that was to do a project that was over 100 yards in length. And as you can obviously see by all of this, um, none of these are anywhere near 100 yards. So I only had two days. I panicked and thought, oh, what am I going to do in two days to, to get something done? So I thought, okay, I'll get out my uh, trusty old Felici yarn again. I had uh, a few balls of the um, Beyond the Wall colorway. That's a, a Game of Thrones inspired colorway. Uh, I'll just show that to you first. So Nitpicks Felici. Always great to have these on hand. And so then I went to the... Um, project pages for what people have made with this because we had to do something over 100 yards but also had to be in the fingering weight. So because this is 218 yards per ball I knew I could use half a ball and then uh, uh, be able to uh, meet those criteria. So 90% of the uh, projects for Felici yarn is socks of course but I knew I wouldn't be able to get a pair of socks done in two days. There's no way. Um, so I did find, though, on, uh, on the project pages um, that uh, somebody had done a Kindle Cozy. And uh, let's see, this is by Jennifer Littlejohns. And um, what it is is just basically, it's almost like a square, small sock um, that would fit a Kindle. Now, I don't have a Kindle, but I do have a Kobo. It's something that I was given a couple of years ago. I think it was for my um, 35 years at the hospital. I had my choice of s some gifts and I thought, okay, I always go for tech stuff. I went for a Kobo reader. So um, I didn't have a cover for it and I haven't used it actually, to be honest, in, a, in quite a while. So I thought, okay, that'd be cool to kind of uh, make a cover for this. So yeah, my Kobo fits in here. There's my Kobo there. Um, I hadn't even turned it on in quite a while. It was nice to get that up and going again. But here's the cozy that I made for it. And it was 122 yards. Um, and it's just a two by one rib at the top, plain stockinette, just like a sock, and then a kitchener at the bottom. So it makes a really nice little pouch. And even if I didn't want to use it for my Kobo, I could certainly use it as a bag for anything else. Um, I could even run maybe um, a thread or a ribbon through the top to cinch it up and make a pouch for carrying whatever I wanted, maybe in my purse or my bag. So yeah, I'm pleased that I was able to get this done in just a little over a day. So I was able to get that challenge met. So yeah, that was nice to, to get done. And I'm so glad that I um, realized before it was too late because if you finish all of these challenges, you get these special badges over at uh, at Gryffindor House. So, yeah, um, so that was a, a good good thing to get done. 
One of the other things that you can do at the Harry Potter House Cup is an activity called detention and that's where it gives you the opportunity to complete something that you've started the previous month, the previous term, or in my case previous two years. Uh, so uh, if you just finish it off and submit it um, you get points for detention. So uh, in January I decided that uh, I was going to finish off something that's been lingering for so very long. Um, this is in a bag. It might give you an idea of how old it is. Uh, yeah, a Halloween bag. And this, if you've uh, watched my other videos, was started in not this past Halloween, but the one before. That's right. 2016 I started this project. And I thought it's about time that I just finish it off and uh, call it a day. So um, this is something that I haven't worked on in quite a while, but I really didn't have any interest in finishing it off. And this was my uh, Close to You shawl uh, by Justina Lorkowska. Now this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's a very popular pattern. And I started out going great guns, but um, uh, you know, I lost interest in basically finishing it off. So I realized that it was big enough to make maybe not a shawl, but a, a kerchief. So um, I, all I did was bind it off and, and uh, call it done. So I've been using this uh, Volan Vine Yarns uh, Mexican Hot Chocolate colorway for this. And uh, this is what I have left, which is plenty to do another uh, project with. So that's that's nice. I will uh, skein that back up for something else. Um, but here is the actual project. And I know this format, you won't be able to see it all held up, but I will definitely add images um, at the end showing the whole thing. So it's plenty big enough for a kerchief. This isn't even blocked. so. And it's already, um, you know, quite quite large. So it's just basically a garter uh, stitch with some lace up the side. And uh, yeah, I just um, decided I've had enough of knitting on it and uh, and submitted that for detention. So yeah, at least I'll be able to wear this, um, you know, indoors. It's not a heavy item at all. So. This will be nice just to wear with a shirt or whatever as a kerchief. Let's see, uh, three more things to share with you. Um, one of them is something else that I've completed and that's a pair of socks. So um, as I mentioned a few podcasts ago, I once again participated in um, um, Danny at Little Bobbins Knits. Uh, Christmas Eve cast on and uh, this year I decided to use one of Lisa's at Fiber Nymph Dye Works wonderful colorways that I bought from her I, maybe it was last year that I got this um, this is her home for Christmas colorway beautiful beautiful on her bounce base and I just separated it into two um, little cakes so I could do my usual two at a time socks plenty left. I could probably get another pair of socks out of these, which would be wonderful. So uh, let's see. I also used for contrasting heel, toes, and cuffs uh, her just white uh, bounce half skein. So this was great to use um, on those as well. And uh, yeah, here's the finished socks. And it's my usual vanilla sock with the two by two rib for the cuff and uh, just a, a German short row heel and Kitchener rounded toes. So yeah, those I really love. I really love that colorway. It's so beautiful. And uh, yeah, it was great. I was able to match them up uh, perfectly by starting the yarn in exactly the same spot. That's why I love splitting it up into two cakes and uh, making sure that I get identical socks because I'm just weird that way. So uh, uh, another pair of socks off the needles, which means I had to put another pair of socks back on. And this time I'm making a pair, I'm actually making two pairs of socks. And this is for 
something else at the house cup I know surprise surprise um, this is for what they call a mission and this is a project that will take you between six and eight weeks to complete and I'm hoping that I can get two pairs of socks done uh, by I think it's the end of March sometime in the end, near the end of March um, so what I did for the first pair because I needed something in purple for my Gryffindor rainbow challenge is I chose this uh, supernatural yarns in the uh, tickling charm colorway and here it is here and I'm still working on these so I will show you them in a second but here's the uh, yarn caked up beautiful um, purple with uh, blues it pops of blues in there really really pretty and of course I'm just doing the plain vanilla sock again which shows off that yarn really well so I started again at the cuffs and I'm doing two at a time so um, I just have to measure to see if they're long enough uh, and then I will start the heels so I'm hoping to get once I get those done then I have to do a second pair uh, in a different colorway so that's going to be um, a challenge to get done because I'm also working on what they call an owl for the house cup which is the large um, three month uh, challenge that you make for yourself and this time I'm doing something that uh, needed cables so I was gifted a pattern called the Aspen's Blanket However, it was written for super chunky, bulky yarn and huge needles. And I decided to write my own blanket pattern using the cable pattern from that design and then adding them as two panels in a larger blanket with uh, smaller needles. So um, I'm almost half done, halfway done on this project. I'll just clear off a few of these things out of the way. And um, I know I won't be able to show you in this format how big the blanket is, but I will definitely add a photo um, at the end to show you as well. I mean, even if I was sitting here at the normal um, vantage point that I usually do, uh, I still wouldn't be able to show you this in its entirety because it is becoming so large. I'll move my little, my little bird out of the way. So, as I said, I've added a, a few um, panels of garter stitch. There's a slip stitch detail on there. And then um, a panel of cable, cable work. And then another panel of um, garter stitch. And then it repeats again over the, the second uh, section. So this is just half uh, the width of the blanket here, but at least you can see a bit of the um, cable work that is done in this. It's beautiful. Um, it's a 16 row repeat. Uh, and yeah, I'm finding that each row takes a fair amount of time. Um, I think it's 180 stitches across and um, it's getting to be quite large. I think I'm about 110 rows uh, completed out of 255 that will be the entire blanket. But um, I've already started on, I believe, the eighth ball of yarn, and I will show you what I'm using for this. I, ha I purchased 25 uh, balls of this from uh, Knit Picks. It's just acrylic yarn, but um, it's really nice and soft. It's their Brava Bulky in this cream color, and it's really pretty, 100% acrylic. And uh, yeah, um, as I said, I believe I'm working on ball eight, but I have 25 of them, so I have more than enough to finish this blanket. I'll have plenty left over. So yeah, that's going along very well. And as I said, I will take a photo of the entire blanket um, so you can see it all laid out. I'll have to lay it out on the floor, I think, to get a good picture of it. So I will add that at the end of the podcast. So um, that's it for knitting uh, this episode. Um, the other crafting that I wanted to share with you was some sculpting. 
and um, besides doing some um, special items for Lisa at Vibrant Dye Works, um, I've also done uh, a couple of other things, one for my shop and another for a challenge over at the House Cup. Um, sometimes over in the Harry Potter House Cup, they allow what they call non-RAV crafts. And that's anything that is not um, fiber related, either um, knitting, crocheting, spinning, yarn dyeing, weaving, that kind of thing. So um, when there's a class that has a non-RAV crafts allowed, um, I love to participate in that because I like to be able to um, do some sculpting when I'm able. And this past month, I was um, there was a prompt to do something that would be influenced by or inspired by uh, a creature from Fantastic Beasts called the Akami. And the Akami bird is, well, it's a bird, half bird, half snake. And it grows and shrinks to the amount of space that there is. So if you've seen Fantastic Beasts, this is the creature that they catch in a teapot. So um, a lot of people were doing um, knitted uh, projects because if you did a 3D Akami, um, you get extra points. So when I saw that no non-RAV crafts were allowed for this, I knew I wanted to sculpt it. Um, so as I said, there's been people that have made 3D knitted versions, but I decided to make my own little miniature Akami. So this is uh, what I've done. So I hope you can see that well. Um, it's a snake all coiled up, but with wings, feathered wings, and then a feathered crest. He's got a couple of horns on his head and a, and a beak like a bird. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to create. And I just uh, attached him, glued him to um, um, a stone that I had we had picked up when we went to Hubby's school reunion um, out at the beach. We got some of these flat stones and I thought that was perfect to attach him to. And like my dragon that I had done previously, I used perfect pearls for uh, painting him up as well. So yeah, I was um, really happy to have the opportunity to get some more sculpting done um, for that class prompt. And um, as I said, um, I'll have more photos at the end and I'll have a few showing um, while I was making this guy too. Okay, so uh, besides him, I've done a, um, one more thing that I've been wanting to do for my uh, Etsy store for a while. Um, but what I had to do first was to collect some supplies. And I went to eBay and ordered some miniature dollhouse plates. And uh, these are beautiful, but the only problem is they come from Thailand. So as you can imagine, it took months to get here. I think I ordered these in November and they just arrived a couple of weeks ago. So these are these little miniature ceramic plates that come in different colors. And I got a few of the colored ones and a whole bunch of the white ones. And I thought these would uh, make great, um, maybe not stitch markers, but either um, um, thing, uh, charms that you can add to your project bags, or you can use them for larger projects as uh, progress keepers. So uh, what I'd like to do is more um, dinners or breakfasts on these plates. Uh, a lot of polymer um, artists use these plates to create um, little little miniature dinners. So I tried my hand at my first one the other day and um, decided to do some um, uh, spaghetti and meat sauce or tomato sauce with uh, garlic toast. So I've done a few of them both with um, silver and gold findings and these are little forks that I also ordered online. Um, I have uh, the metallic style forks, knives, and spoons for my future projects. But uh, there's the spaghetti. I hope you can see that uh, okay in this format. And uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we have the spaghetti all piled up on the plate with some uh, sauce, some shredded cheese, 
basil leaves and uh, some garlic toast with parsley. So yeah, those were a lot of fun. So what I need to do now is uh, just attach the findings. I will be attaching a couple of rings to these and a lobster clasp and then I'll uh, add them to my shop. So I will do a notice on Instagram when I've added these and also um, I still haven't added the uh, peaches, the preserved peaches that I have made a little while ago. I'll add those to my shop soon as well. Um, I've just been restocking a few items for the shop and uh, yeah so I'll be adding these as well. And so if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, please do if you want to be informed of when I'm updating my shop because that's where I'll announce it. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to doing some other uh, dinners or breakfasts using these very cute miniature ceramic plates. So let's see. Um, oh, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, participated in Vani um, at uh, the Bees Knees group over on Ravelry in her um, bookmark swap. And I was paired up with Brittany, and that is B-Wing on Ravelry. And uh, she very kindly uh, sent me a bookmark that she uh, had weaved. So this is beautiful. I love the nips in this, um, in this yarn. And the beautiful, so straight uh, weaving on that. I really love it. Comes out so so nice. So not only did she send me that, um, we also were asked to send a card and she sent me this uh, handmade card which is so cute. And some delicious teas that I really need it on our cold days and this is winter glow. Looks, looks really delicious. So thank you very much uh, Brittany for all of that. It was fun to um, swap with you and I hope you enjoyed um, the one that I sent you. So the other things that I've received in the mail uh, lately is some yarn. I uh, went over to Forbidden Woolery. Now I think they just recently changed their name. Um, and uh, they were having a sale uh, a few weeks back. So I decided to pick up four skeins of yarn, two of them for myself and two as prizes for the Harry Potter knit along uh, because she does have a lot of Harry Potter colorways. So here are the two that I purchased for prizes in our uh, in our group and these are both the Remember All colorway, this beautiful uh, Superwash Merino, Nylon and Stellina. So one of these is already up for grabs in the first challenge that we have going on in the group. So if you'd like to win this, head over to the Victorian Studio podcast group on RAV and check out the rules and regulations for challenge number one. And this will be the prize for that. So some lucky participant will win that. And this one will be for a future prize draw. So not only did I get those, I also treated myself, of course, to two skeins of their beautiful Phoenix colorway. And these are just so, so beautiful. I love the depth of color in this. And this is on her gluttony base, 100% superwash merino, 274 yards. So that's why I got two of them so I can um, leave my options open to do something really special with this beautiful beautiful colorway. So yeah, thrilled to to get those. Uh, let's see, I think that's it for acquisitions. Um, so what I decided to do was for um, all the entries in January, I went over to random.org and popped in the numbers 1 to 130. Now I know I should have I didn't realize until after I had done it that I really should have put in two to post 130, um, not including my first one, but I didn't realize that until I had pulled them. So um, next time I will make sure that I draw between uh, post number two to the end of the mon month. Um, but um, I decided to um, pull for two smaller prizes this month. And uh, the first one is for a $10 US 
giftable Ravelry pattern. And so the winner of that is post number 93. That's Sylvie Mira Kara. So congratulations, Sylvie. Let me know what pattern you would like and um, send that to me in a PM over on Ravelry and I'll make sure that you get that. And then the second one is uh, for a sorting hat um, progress keeper. This is a charm that I had uh, purchased last year. And so I added a, uh, a couple of rings and a lobster clasp to it. So the sorting hat goes to post number 39, Pride and Prejudice, and that is Terry. So congratulations, Terry. Uh, let me know when you see this and I will get your address from you so I can send you your sorting hat progress keeper to you. So, um, as I said, uh, there will be more prizes at the end of February, both for the regular thread for the Harry Potter knit along and for the special challenge. And then at the end of March, we will have some larger prize drawings um, for the first quarter. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you um, enjoyed seeing things a little closer up this week. And, um, you know, I hope that uh, uh, this format wasn't too jarring for you. Uh, we'll see how it goes and see if this will be continuing on. Uh, as usual, I will add photos at the end of uh, some of my works as I've been um, uh, developing them. So I hope you enjoy seeing those and of course a few mandatory cat photos as well. So I hope you all have a wonderful couple of weeks until I record again. And uh, thank you very much for joining me in my studio and I hope you'll return next time for the next episode of the Victorian Studio Podcast. Until then, take care everyone. Bye-bye.